Hey everybody, welcome to Rectum. I'm Sean and today I'm bringing to you the Case Lockback Hammerhead Folding Knife. It's a nice pocket knife you carry around in the woods when you're hunting, when you're carving your initials in the tree, or whatever you're doing. It is kind of positioned to be a competition with the Buck 110 or the Charade Uncle Henry. So, as I do my normal reviews, if you're new, I'm going to do a close-up unboxing followed by camera back to me and my final thoughts. So before we begin, why don't you go ahead, click subscribe and click the bell icon. That way you'll get notifications whenever I post new content. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for joining me. We'll be right back with the close up. Hey, all right, thank you for sticking around. Here is the actual unboxing. I've actually unboxed it earlier, um, a few weeks ago. And right now I'm gonna show you a simulation. I put it all back together. This is the hammerhead. There you go, model number. Hunter lockback. Okay, good, good, good. That's wrapped. All right, look at that. Okay. Now this is, that looks really nice. I like the way this looks. Um, I like the stitching. I turned it around. This is a um, this is a red flag immediately. Uh, price of the knife and seeing this, uh, just a cut for your belt when you buy something like a buck. And no, I'm not a buck uh, ambassador, but you will hear me mention buck a couple of times. Uh, this is what you get. It's actually a, another piece of leather stitched, and it's got the model number of the blade and a nice buck. And you're gonna get this at the, uh, I think under $50 price point. This one uh, be $80. So big, big red flag there. I, I do like the snap. The snap is strong and really quality. Let's get out the, let's get out the knife itself. Here she is. So, talk to you about this blade a little bit right away. What we noticed right away was this is really gritty, and that could probably be solved with a little oil, but uh, I think it should have been solved at the factory, again, especially at this price point. Uh, the case logo right here. And the press to release is pretty stamped. Um, take it or leave it, it's just kinda uh, at this price, I would kind of maybe want it to be machined, but it's it's obviously just stamped. Now, the hammerhead himself. Uh, let's see if it focuses on it. There's a ding in the blade. His mouth looks, yeah, you know, it's just a it's just a design. Doesn't look that great, but there's a ding there. I, I'll show you later. This is this is dull. And I'm not causing anything. It's it's remarkably dull. Um, there's a ding there. There's some stuff going on inside of this hammerhead. Um, it's really tough to get the camera to focus in on it. But there's a little ding, and there's some stuff happening right here. And this edge up here is this edge is rather. Um, uh, it feels like it's been dried through rocks or something. It's kind of rough. So with all the strikes against this blade, I gotta tell you, oh, and this doesn't fit at all. There's a big, big space between here. Let's compare it really fast. And again, I'm not a buck ambassador, but I'm gonna show you a buck from uh, 1974, I think, to 1980. It's a two-dot. Um, here it is. So this is the Buck 110. Um, it's a two dot, and I mean two dot because there's a it says Buck 110 and there's a dot on either side of the 110. But the back fits perfectly. It's so smooth. The blade is still really sharp. This was a garage sale find at five dollars. Um, a way better knife than this in every regard. 
um, the thing about it was it was covered in this green patina and I just I polished it off with some jeweler's rouge on my jeweler's lathe and made a pretty knife but that's how they were being made in 1974 to how they're being made right now so let's turn the camera around and I will give you my final thoughts on this case hammerhead thanks for watching and we'll be right back bye bye all right welcome back and there she is up close and personal thank you for sticking around my final thoughts on this knife is it's something that should be avoided it's just not that quality uh, the fit finish isn't that good the blade has markings on it and it's it's a super dull blade it's it's kind of remarkable how bad this knife is at its price point and i'm going to tell you a little a little anecdote a little story uh, i like these Skillcraft ballpoint pens. You may have seen these at the post office. They're labeled Skillcraft U.S. Government. Um, these are made by the blind. Uh, I eat by them. I'll put a link below so you can buy them too. They're quality pens. Now this knife, why I'm, why I'm coming up with this is this knife is something that if it were half the price and made by the handicapped, I would totally support it and I would totally recommend that you buy one however it's not made by the handicapped and it's expensive and it will totally recommend you not buy one you go out and buy yourself a buck or an uncle henry or any number of other knives here's my daily carrier that's a benchmate little auto knife in arizona we're allowed automatic knives uh, it's a great knife that's a, it's an expensive knife um, but it's what I carry daily and I carry a buck 110 quite a bit um, I would just say this knife with the the markings I'm gonna put a link below so you can buy it maybe you want to try it maybe maybe it's pretty neat maybe you, you like it uh, but it's it's dull blade dings in here it's ill-fitted I don't recommend I'm not gonna recommend this knife I'm gonna totally just say avoid this knife um, they've got to come down before I would say buy one 40 bucks this thing should be $40 cheaper than what it is uh, given the quality and that you can find a buck of higher quality for much cheaper than than this knife it's just I really had high hopes for it I really wanted to add this to my collection of knives for everyone to see and everyone to enjoy and it's just not that knife Thank you for tuning in to Rectum. I'm Sean. Click subscribe. I'll see you again real soon. Uh, here again is the hammerhead from Case. Have a good day. Bye-bye.